St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first are Paul and Diane Case from Surrey, British Columbia, for the repose of the soul of Peter Nectenis, for the special intentions of their family and in thanksgiving. The second is Sylvia Lenton from Oshawa, Ontario, in memory of Clara Sloan, who was born August 6, 1908, and died January 1, 2010. Her parents, Bridget Stafford and Bernard Sloan, and her deceased brothers and sisters. Ms. Lenton is here with us today. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship. Grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father. When that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So the disciples kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. The Gospel of the Lord. In the Gospel today, we stand with Peter, James, and John on that mountaintop as they witness the transfiguration of Jesus. The story reminds me of a time that I took a group of grade 8 students from the inner city on a school trip to a ranch. One afternoon, I offered to take them out for a nature walk. Most of these kids had never seen wildlife or experienced the woods at all. All during the walk, these kids kept peppering me with questions. They kept asking where the animals were. They threw rocks. They thrashed the bushes with sticks. They screamed at each other and generally made enough noise to scare away anything that lived within five miles. They had the glory of nature all around them, yet they could not see it because they did not know how to be still and receive it. Now that was the same problem for Peter in our gospel. He could not sit still or remain silent in the presence of the transfigured Christ. He had to ask questions. He wanted to run around and gather materials to build a tent. He thought he could contain this experience, study it, make sense of it for himself. If God had not intervened and spoke to him through the crowds, making him fall silent, his busyness might have caused him to miss the whole experience. We modern-day disciples act much the same way. We don't experience the glory of Jesus transfigured because we are making far too much noise. Too much is going on inside of us to hear the word of God saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. We are people who travel the superhighway of information. We receive hundreds of thousands of sound bites and images every day on our laptops, our tablets, our smartphones. We fool ourselves into believing that because we are plugged into YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, that we have a real connection to other people. But true fellowship with others and with God can only be experienced face to face. The most intense connections we make with others often occur when we pray together with them in silence. God blesses us not in streaming data, but in sacred stillness. There was a mother in her mid-thirties who died, leaving two little boys with their father. On the night of the funeral, after they had all gone to bed, the youngest boy came into his father's bedroom and, tugging at his dad's blanket, told his father he couldn't sleep. "'Can I stay in here with you?' he asked. "'Yes, you can,' his father said. After they had settled in bed, the little voice spoke again in the dark. "'Daddy, are you facing me?' Can you see me? Yes, I'm facing you. I can see you, his father said. And then the child said, I think I'll be all right then. In our gospel, God turned his face towards his beloved son. And the dazzling light of his grace transfigured Jesus and gave him the strength to face the dark night of crucifixion. The lesson here is, that if we are willing to take some time out of our noisy, hectic lives and seek the face of God, 
he will turn his face towards us and give us the strength we need to face our own trials. God our Father always faces us, even in our darkest nights, and he will see us through whatever we need to get through in this life. But first, we have to stop running around trying to make it happen on our own. We have to stop looking for what we can get out of religion and concentrate on what God is giving us. To appreciate the true beauty of faith, you must approach it with a degree of stillness. The gospel today invites you to climb the mountain with Jesus. The church invites you to see the glory of Christ in the Eucharist that we celebrate together. And if I thought there was a better place to turn towards the face of God, I would tell you. If I thought there was a website or a program for my computer that could contain the glory of God, I would be sitting in front of that screen right now. But I am here, climbing that mountain, waiting in silent expectation for the Lord to appear in this bread and in this wine. And when he does, I know that he will help me get through the days and the nights ahead. I believe that Jesus came not to demand faith from us, but to let us know just how much faith God has in us. He was telling us that God is continually reaching out to us. If only we would listen to that message. But most of the time we are too noisy or too busy, getting more and more of what we already have enough of. If only we would stop looking for God in all the wrong places, and turn and see that God is facing us, directing us to the true path that we must take by the light that shines from his Son, Jesus. Let us now join our prayers together in thankful praise to God for revealing his Son to us. That God will reveal the glory of his Son, Jesus, to those whose intentions are offered in this Mass we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that God will be our guide and our strength as we sort out our busy lives to make space for quiet contemplation of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that firmly rooted in the presence of Christ, we will find positive ways to serve God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that we may have the faith to follow the gospel and so gain entry into the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have passed away may find peace and joy in the presence of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, help us to see what we really need for happiness here on earth, and through the grace of your Son, Jesus, transfigure our lives in his image. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Blessed yes. be God. Pray, brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice of your The praise and glory of his name, for our good and for our Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings made here to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor cleanse us from the stains of sin. Through Christ, our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Benedict our Pope, and with Thomas our Bishop, with the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In your Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Father Christ, bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for trust? Lord, help me to remember that nothing is going to happen to me today that you and I together can't handle. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, 
whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to two donors. The first are Paul and Diane Case from Surrey, British Columbia. The second is Sylvia Lenton from Oshawa, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, and all of us here at Daily Mass, we wish you a safe and happy civic holiday. <laughs>